for allowing me to come up on stage and share uh, our story, uh, Ripple's story, about building the Internet of Value. Uh, I'm Ashish Birla. I'm the Senior Vice President of Ripple. I've been building blockchain solutions for Ripple for five years. Feels like 100 years in blockchain, uh, but I'm still standing here, and uh, I'm excited to tell you a little bit how, about our path uh, to get uh, where we are today. Uh, so, you know, this has been a long journey for, for us in the blockchain space. Uh, I call the early days that flat line. If you told people you worked in blockchain, they thought you were crazy. And uh, it's been, you know, $1.5 billion in market cap in 2013, only a few digital currencies and assets out there, to today where you have $438 billion of market cap and thousands and thousands of digital currencies out there. And it's sort of like, how do you make sense of some of this madness that's out there? And uh, is there really $438 billion of value created out there? Well, a couple of things to think about. Uh, number one is product market fit. Are you using blockchain to solve a specific problem, or are you just using blockchain to fundraise or because it's the, the latest buzzword? So that's number one. Number two, even if you're solving a problem, is that problem big enough for your customers to care? And what we've found is that, listen, if that problem is not 10x better by your blockchain solutions, they don't care. It's not worth the change and the hassle to go through and implement your new fancy blockchain solution. And the third, because we are here talking about payments, you can't talk about payments without, without talking about regulation. And so what's your regulatory strategy? Are you engaging in safe, compliant ways to move money, especially in Ripple's case where it's cross-border? And so I think that's the third one. And so how do you separate the signal from the noise? I mean, there is a company uh, that has an iced tea on the blockchain. And I promise you that iced tea does not taste any better now that it's on the blockchain. But their stock rose 30% because they said they're going to be on the blockchain. So I think that the, the main thing is, I mean, are you solving customer problems? Are you gaining traction? And do you have product market fit? And you know, that's what we've been about uh, from, from day one. But it wasn't easy for us to get there. Uh, early on, we tried a whole bunch of things on, on the blockchain in 2013, a lot of them horrible ideas. But we took a page from Jeff Bezos and Amazon and really boiled it down to what is Ripple going to be good at? And we really picked cross-border payments. And we focused and focused and focused on cross-border payments. And partially because almost every other use case you build upon that's innovative on the blockchain starts with innovating on payments itself. For example, smart contracts. People, contracts have been around for a long time. People put it on a blockchain. They called it a smart contract. That's the only thing that's different. What's novel about it is that you can have people run your application around the world without knowing them, without trusting them, because you can pay for it using a digital asset. And that's, that's the innovation. So it comes back to payments as the baseline use case for a lot of other things that will come on the blockchain. But if you don't solve payments first, you can't innovate on top of it. And so there are a lot of problems that you have to solve. And we talked to a lot of our customers uh, around the world. And, and I was surprised that even large customers, it takes them three to five days to get the payment where it needs to be. And uh, you know, this was the case of uh, Amazon. Uh, paying merchants cross-border and taking weeks for that payment to arrive. 5% <clears throat> of payments fail using the traditional uh, wire system. You know, Seagate, one of, uh, one of our investors and customers, uh, they have to pay hardware manufacturers around the world, and they told us a big problem is that they don't even know where a payment fails, and this happens 5% of the time for their cross-border payments. And then lastly, it's, it's costly to do cross-border payments. Uh, if you want to move money efficiently today, you need to have that capital in the destination country that, where you want to actually pay out payroll or your merchants or, uh, or any other sort of application. And that is costly, trapped capital that you could be putting back into your business. That's $5 trillion with a T. And so how are we solving this? In, and how is Ripple building products to address these, uh, these, these deficiencies in the market? Uh, the first product we brought to market was XCurrent. 
XCurrent is being deployed and sold to uh, financial institutions and banks uh, around the world, including uh, a number of ones in, in Canada, CIBC and RBC. Uh, but what it does is it helps you more efficiently communicate with different financial partners. So you can exchange payment details, compliance information in, in a real-time manner. But as much as a, the tech guy inside of me hates to admit this, a big part of the innovation is nothing to do with tech. It's about the governance, bringing those financial partners together, agreeing on a rule book, agreeing on the data standards. And, and this was just hours and hours, and it took us two years to develop the, the standards around the technology itself. <clears throat> the next product is uh, XRapid. And uh, today, if you want to move money into Mexico, and you want it to be instant, you have to have money trapped pesos in a Mexican bank account for you to pay out. That's a big problem if you want to expand, like a lot of the e-commerce companies are, into hundreds of different countries in a short amount of time. With XRapid, you can use digital assets. XRP is the one that XRapid uh, uh, uses to move money on demand instantly into countries. And, and this is a product that we're uh, excited to uh, bring to market in the next couple of uh, months. And lastly, uh, XVIA. XVIA is a product that we uh, recently announced. Uh, we have five new partners that joined uh, two weeks ago, signed up to use Ripple to move money. XVIA is a product for corporates uh, that want to actually have a more efficient way to move money and, and use Ripple technology. And so we're introducing this product. It's called XVIA, mainly uh, focused on the uh, corporates uh, that want to move money cross-border. Uh, we have about 100 different financial institutions globally uh, signing up uh, to use Ripple products. Uh, we're signing up about a customer per week at, uh, you know, right now. And we have a heavy emphasis in Asia. Uh, Asia is, is a very hot market. They are innovating. They're investing a lot in payment infrastructure. They're looking to leapfrog the West in terms of innovation. You heard uh, you know, the, the last uh, person talk a little bit about mobile. That is a very, very hot region for our products. Uh, we're excited to be working uh, with, with customers in that region as well. Uh, so this is, this is really exciting. This is Santander. They were, they were losing to startups that had a more efficient way to move money. You've heard of TransferWise, a mobile app that, was, that has signage all over London as a faster way to move money than, than Santander, a massive global bank. Santander built a competing application, it's called OnePay, on top of Ripple uh, to more efficiently move money. It's, it's a mobile app. They're rolling it out to uh, millions of customers worldwide. And this is real enterprise blockchain technology that's used. This is not an innovation project. This is being rolled out commercially. And so we've been working on this for, uh, for, for about a year, and it's exciting to see this come in, uh, into actual use. The last component is uh, regulation. And uh, you, know, you, you can't work with pay, you know, in payments without talking about the regulatory aspect. We've been working with uh, central banks from around the world, uh, Sama in the Middle East, uh, Bank of England, two examples that we've done pilots with to show the benefits of using blockchain technology to more efficiently move money. Uh, it's a big education project. This is something that we started five years ago, the conversations, the education. I think now other blockchain companies are starting to realize that you can't really innovate without taking the government and regulation uh, uh, in, in stride. We've been doing this for, for about five years. We have 40, uh, 40 different relations across the world to make sure that we're adhering to local regulations and standards as well. All right, to sum it up, I think you know, blockchain is not uh, a fancy buzzword. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hype around it, but there is real commercial enterprise utility. I showed you Santander, real wide, uh, real use case out there using blockchain technology to move money. It's about product market fit. Uh, you know, we have traction with over 100 different financial institutions globally, signing up about a, you know, one customer per week. Um, and then you know, the base thing is that a lot of the innovation that is going to come out of blockchain starts with first solving the payments problem and then innovating on top of that. Okay.